Nia Cade. I'm from um, Port Washington, Maryland. And um, I recently graduated high school. I'm currently enrolled at St. John's University. And I've been an artist since, really, as long as I can remember, honestly. I think I've been making art in some capacity since I was about four or five. And then I took it seriously when I was around probably 11 or 12. And I was like, okay, I have talent. I should really put some time and some effort into this. I kind of, I, I jumped around a bit, honestly. I started out with watercolor and acrylic. And then I moved on to gouache, and then I think I got a little too impatient for water-based medium, so then I got into oil. And I got into oil about really only this year because my friend um, was trying to convince me to do it, and I was like, no, I don't like it, I'm not patient enough for it, I'm going to be bad at it. And then I tried it, and I loved it because, you know, you can layer, and oil, I think, gives you a lot more freedom than some of the other mediums out there. Um, and then I style-wise, usually I kind of gravitate a little bit towards realism, but recently I've been branching out to more abstract and surreal type art. Um, my background with painting murals. Um, I didn't start doing murals until the summer, actually, and I was given this opportunity by the Paints Institute, so thank you very much. Um, the, my first mural ever was at gallery, is, um, a gallery place, and it was um, definitely not as large, I guess, as when you think of a generic mural, but it opened my eyes a bit to the process of it and how much effort an artist to put into it because I think when you think of think of someone usually painting or drawing or sculpting but in a confined space, a studio, a room by themselves and we're getting a mural, it's kind of it's an interactive piece so you have to focus on the people around you, focus on your surroundings. When I got there, I thought we were going to jump into painting just off the, off the jump, go ahead and then it turned out there's a lot of prep that goes into working out to make sure you're not going to get paint on your surroundings. It is public space, it's public property, so you don't have the liberty to just spill paint like you would in your room or in your, studi in your, in your um, studio, or you don't have the liberty to kind of just like walk about and not really be aware of your surroundings. There's other people painting around you, so you have to be mindful of other artists, you have to be respectful of other artists. So I think it taught me a lot about not necessarily the um, artistic aspect, but just kind of the business aspect and just being a, a little bit more conscientious of what's around me. Um, so for my first mural, because it was the first time I had done something and I knew Gallery Place is kind of um, a staple part of DC, I was like, it's going to be viewable to a lot of people. I thought, you know, I need to make it either graphic, not like graphic as in like jarring, but just something easily recognizable to the eye. You walk by, you could understand what's going on. So um, usually when I'm making art at home or in another space, I can just jump right into it. I don't really have a vision, it just happens. But I had a time limit, I had a deadline, I had to think of all these things like off the jump. So um, I did a sketch on my iPad and I brought that with me to the, um, to the actual site just so I could have reference. And then I just kind of went from there. I think that the hardest part was the fact that I did have a deadline, which is something that's normal to most artists and that's just was never applicable to me um and then in terms of actually making the piece i think that something i really focused on was kind of unity togetherness i think one of my favorite parts of the piece i did is a sign where a person's holding up a sign that says um, we're just getting started and i think that really captures the movement and where we're all heading because i think that um what i would encourage other people to think about this movement is that you can be an activist in so many different ways, and I wanted to capture that in my piece. We're just getting started means that start having those conversations that are hard. Start talking to people. Start expressing yourself in ways you hadn't before. I want them to feel that, I want them to see a piece of themselves. In, What's the question? Sorry. <laughs> I, was like, I want people to take away from my piece is that I want them to see a piece of themselves, something they hold true, something they believe in, in what I made. So whether it be, um, I tried to be as inclusive as I could and I tried to show everything that in my mind rings true about DC. DC is a very tight knit community and I think that it's really special in that because I mean the DMV as a whole, it's kind of, we have our like sex and different parts that we all represent. But I think what makes it on the DMV and specifically DC so unique is that one, it's a black owned by control town for the most part and I think that a lot of people in DC are really um are really proud of that you know it's really special to grow up in a place where so many people look like you and people don't look like you and they're okay with that so I wanted to to have that whole true in my piece this is an incredible opportunity thank you John thank you Paints Institute for the opportunity um I think it's almost like hard to wrap my head around. I'm 18 years old and what like 
four months ago, the biggest thing I was concerned about was running track and getting a prom dress. I could have never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would have um, something with the Building Museum, a place I'd gone to since I was a kid, wanting anything I'd ever made. And I think it's amazing that they're giving um, so many people this opportunity. I would like to thank, um, <clears throat> obviously my parents. <laughs> I would thank them for <clears throat> supporting my art and for being there for the day when I actually painted. Um, I would thank my friend Miguel, who's also going to be in the exhibit, for being my best friend and for always being supportive. Um, and I think I would want to end on a message to anyone who sees this, who sees my art, who takes something from it. I think that the fact that you took the time out of your day to look at all the pieces that we've made says a lot about you, and I think it says a lot about what you want, the change you want to see in the world, so I would like to thank you for that, too.